Hey, this is Daniel Norton. I'm here in my studio in New York City with Paulina. And today we're going to do kind of a fun thing. Every once in a while I'll do this, you know, I see an old shot that I like. Not, not an old shot like that I made. I'm not that old. Uh, and we, I got a cool shot of Audrey, Audrey Hepburn, and I thought, you know, fa same facial structure kind of. You kind of have a similar, both beautiful women <laughs> with dark hair. I guess, you know, there you go, whatever. Um, I, I thought it was a cool shot. I thought the, the look of it would work well for her. And as I was looking at it, I'm thinking, well, this was probably shot on some kind of a film set. It's a very old picture. I tried to, uh, to look at who shot it. Uh, originally, and I couldn't find it. So I'm guessing it's probably some film still, you know, something like that. Um, and I'm looking at it, and, I'm, and it's pretty clear to me that it's a bunch of kind of, you know, maybe like uh, hot lights, like Fresnels or something that were on a film set that were lighting it up, and they brought her over there and made a nice portrait, which is how a lot of times I did those kind of shots. And at first I was like, well, I could break out my hot lights, so I could do whatever. But I thought, why don't I do it with more modern stuff to kind of show how I'd create something similar using kind of what we, how we shoot today, right? The tools that we use now. So what, this is actually a three light shot. You know, because why not, right? Um, so the, and it's, it's a little unusual too. One of the reasons why I picked this shot is because it's got a very, very heavy top hair light, which is not something you see very often. So I thought, ah, that'd be cool to do. And for that, I'm using my Okta. Because I, I know that I wanted the light to be relatively soft so I don't get like a blown out hair because I knew I was going to uh, make the exposure high. But the softness of the light will help kind of graduate that, uh, you know, uh, that exposure so that it won't be like, plong. And you know, sometimes when you take a really hard light behind someone, you smack them in the hair with it, it just becomes this like weird halo. This will be a bit more of a glow. I did have to put a grid on it though. So there's a three foot octa above and a B1X with a grid on it. I put the grid on there because the light was bouncing everywhere and it was lighting my background up and I wanted the background to be a bit darker. Uh, and rather than taking down my gray background and putting up a black one, right, which is the other option, I put a grid on it, simple enough, right? So that's my, kind of my overhead light. Um, the, uh, we're gonna go through, I'll do each one of these as we go, but I'm just gonna explain them all first. Uh, the next light, which is kind of the key light, basically, is this uh, B1X here with the Shamira Extra extra Small in it. Um, this is kind of coming and feathering past the, the front of her. She's going to look towards the source. It's going to give it shape to her face, give light in her eyes, make a nice even light. But it is going to throw some shadow like under her chin, on the side of her nose, on her cheekbones. And for that, we're going to fill in with, and this is probably kind of unusual, uh, I chose to use a beauty dish. Right? You always get a bang of beauty dish when you do it. Right? Uh, it's a silver beauty dish. I'm putting that there for some specularity. That's kind of my callback to the old, old way of working. You know, they use these big pan lights with silver reflectors. So to kind of tie in that vibe with something that I would use now, silver beauty dish, no grid. That's my fill light. So let's walk through and do each one of these lights and I'll show you what we're getting. Uh, the camera set at f8 at 200th of a second, ISO 100. So none of this light in the space is affecting my shot. And I'm going to start with my overhead light. Turn that guy on. And let me just show you what I'm getting here. Okay. So this is gonna give us just that kind of glow on the hair, right? Again, it's bright, but it's not blown out. And, and not something I would normally do now, so it's kind of fun to do something different. It also gives the shoulders some light. You know, in this case, it's kicking, kicking and hitting her earring and stuff, we'll see. Uh, giving her some separation here, even though she's wearing a dark outfit. So that's basically it. I mean, otherwise, you know, you wouldn't do just this light unless you were on like 2020 or something. And it was like, oh, uh, let me tell you what happened to this company when nobody was, you know, this is just a hair light. So do they even have 2020 anymore? Is that a show anymore? Okay. We're in 2020. Anyways, I just figured that out. Halfway through the thing, I'm figuring out it's 2020. All right. <laughs> All right I'm going to turn that one off for a second because I'm going to do each one separately, guys, so I can show you. All right. So now I'm going to turn on my other lights. So that was in my A group. Uh, let me turn that guy off. In my B group, which is this guy right here, uh, we're gonna get kind of, like I said, a wash of light across her, a fill light, uh, a key light, I should say. Here we go. Cool, right? Nice, pretty light on her face, right? Creating shape, right? Even though it's a soft box, it's still relatively hard light because it's kind of small and it's kind of far away. But it's giving her that overall light on her face creating shadow pattern, creating depth, and we see that all the side of her face is in shadow, which we're gonna fill in with our third light. So let me turn this guy off and just show you the third light for a second. This is now the beauty dish in the front, the silver beauty dish. This is basically our fill light. Good. All right, and that's why it's you know underexposed because it's a fill. So this is the look that's gonna give. It's gonna fill in that side of the face that's dark over here, right? So these two combined are gonna give us, good, two notes, right there, cool. 
this, right? Nice even light across the face, but still has some shadow pattern. And again, you can dial this in as you see fit. If I wanted that to be a little bit darker, but I'm not gonna mess with it yet until I have my third light in, which is my A light. So let's fire that up. Yeah, there we go. Let's get the hand in there, like the traditional pose shatter, uh, chin down a smidge, I think, too. Now, what's important for this, it is a little bit limiting because we're kind of copying a shot, is we wanna make sure she's looking off towards this light. If she's not, what's gonna end up happening is she's gonna create different shadow pattern. But here, we're trying to replicate, like I said. So now the hair is nice and lit up. Her eyes look big and bright. We have shadow here, but it's filled in nicely. She's not overexposed anywhere. Something is wrong, though. What is not, oh. It's in color. I don't think the world was in color back then. I'm not sure. We'll have to ask somebody much older than me. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna capture one. I'm gonna throw black and white on here. Um, now we have nice contrast in there. You know, what's great about shooting tethered like this and use, applying a style now is I can shoot to the style, right? If I looked at it and I was like, oh, you know what? I can actually adjust my light to make sure it's gonna look good. That's one reason why I always say you should try to shoot you know, if you're gonna shoot black and white, you're gonna shoot with a special effect on it or whatever, shoot tethered, put that in in the beginning, that way you're seeing it as you go. All right, so let's shoot a few. Good. Good. We're just gonna play around a little bit and see what we get. Right, because we got the main shot, the, the actual shot was easy. We may find that we might find something we actually like more here. Nice. That was pretty cool. Yeah, and actually it's, it's fairly versatile, right? To, to replicate the shot exactly, we need to, uh, well, which I mentioned, I brought the softbox a bit. Um, you know, we, we brought her exactly that, but even, uh, even moving around a bit, it still looks nice. Now, what I would say is, that actually is kind of nice there. I think the chin down plays the best, though. No matter what we do, I think, I know, and we never have a chin down. You never tell anybody to ever put their chin down, so it's so unusual, right? I'm always telling people their chin up here. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Good like that, focusing, good, good, good. Good, one more. I wanna make sure I have enough space above her, so I'm just kind of, even though I got my box in the shot, I'm not worried about it. If I was in TTL, I'd have to be worried because uh, it would throw off my exposure having the light in the shot, but since I'm in manual right now, I'll just crop that in after. I don't wanna to have to struggle with uh, my composition. You know, and what's interesting about this too, by the way, is that if you look at the original shot, there's like some interesting shadows on the wall, there's some stuff, so I kinda of was playing with that here and leaving that here, so it has a bit of an environment in there. You know, we're seeing a bit of shadow on the wall, we're seeing some shape, and that's how the original shot was, so I thought that would work for us. If that bothered you, then you, would I would would you end up having to do probably raise the octa would would get rid of that shadow out of the shot. Um, this shadow down here is caused primarily by this beauty dish in the front, so you'd have to change the angle of the beauty dish. But then I thought it was more important to get the light correct on her and also to make it look you know as much like the original shot as possible, but adding our own flavor. Yeah. Our own flavor. What flavor are you? We'll find out in future episodes. So if you want to know <laughs> what flavor. <laughs> <laughs> we are. I'm probably like chocolate chip or something. Is chocolate chip a flavor? Or is that more like a, a, I don't know. Yeah, why not? So if you want, <laughs> want to know more about Paulina, I'll put her information in the description, guys. You can follow her. Uh, be sure to follow me, Daniel Norton Photographer. Subscribe to Adorama TV and ring the bell so you get all the notifications. And I'll see you next time on set. <laughs>